Hello, um, so this is the next video. I had a problem resuming the old one. Uh, I will make a video about LinkedIn. Uh, just so you know, I use uh, something called uh, FLAC8 annotation. So I would install it this way. Of course, here. And this uh, enforces a strong, a strong typing, and I also use black as a formatter. Okay, here you can see probably errors related to yeah to lint, but this is not my code. I will not really go through it. Uh, I use local history. It's a way of having versions of your, so I can install it here and show you. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, you basically have versions of your, uh, so Git is good if you commit and between steps, but sometimes you just want to go back to one hour ago or something like that. Uh, one other useful add-on uh, is A JSON viewer, where is it? I think it pretty fight JSON. I think it's this one. Oh no, it's not JSON, it's CSV, sorry. Yes, Rainbow CSV. So what Rainbow CSV does is that for every colon it gives you a color. This way you can have a very nice view that looks like this. <coughs> um, so since I can't really stop the recording or it will not work, I can't image view. So we went through this one. one very nice one. Oh, I also like this one. CSV to a uh, table. So control shift P and then you just type CSV to table and it will. Uh, this one is also cool. It will convert it to a table. This one you can open CSVs and it will open them. Uh, like a. Uh, an Excel file and you can filter this one's very cool. <coughs> and then oh, oh, Git lens. Git lens is very cool. So one thing it, it allows you to develop by the same team that developed Git Kraken's Kraken. Uh, one thing it does is mainly so here you see we see uh, who committed what and the Git commit message, which is very cool when you work in a team. Usually when I work on uh, machine learning and deep learning problems, oh look, no, this is not an official Git lens. Yeah, you see Git, Git history. Oh no, I don't have this one. Okay, whatever. Um, <coughs> when you work with uh, deep learning you work on server and usually what uh, I do is I work on remote uh, using remote SSH so I install this and then I can connect this way I have a, you, you have a new uh, icon here and you can connect to remote servers and you can use exactly the same tool so you can debug the same way you would debug locally you can have the same add-ons you can have the same image you are you can have uh, automatic port forwarding so when you run something here you'll have port and if it's a flask api for example it will forward it to your local uh, machine well th this one is 
uh, vital. I mean, I can't work without it. W one thing I wanted to show you that's not really uh, so it's not an add-on, but it's useful when you debug. So the debugging tool is very, very powerful. As you can see, um, so we are here. I wanted to show you earlier how I debug images. So I have this add-on uh, called, can I, if I remove this, do I have install? This one, uh, view image for Python debugging. And there is another one that this time needs control shift P and uh, image debug or something like that. So you can look it up on their page and you can view images. So for in this case, I can just view image and you can see it here. And for debugging, it, uh, it works for pillow images. It works for tensors. It works for um, plots. <coughs> So when, when I put a breakpoint like this, I can visualize the variables and uh, you can edit them. And one thing, uh, you can you can right click and or you can add to watch. But one other thing we can do is, I don't know if we can do it here. When when you have, let's let's try something here. I can show you on the spot. But just say we have this and let's run run it here. Okay, next step. NumPy is not defined. Let's rerun this. Uh, can I put breakpoint here? Uh, I want it so let's just move by one and then if I have this dump variable here you see here it's a small variable so we can see it here but one thing is you can view value in data viewer and it will open this data viewer you can filter the via values you can imagine I mean of course if you have bigger uh, matrix but that it's very nice you can I think you can even do it for pandas <coughs> data frames as I told you earlier you can control shift P to uh, choose a Python interpreter here And two of the most useful add-ons, uh, they are not add-ons anymore, they are uh, pip packages. So one of them is <coughs> one of them is uh, called DVC. It's very well known and uh, it's very easy to use. So it's called data version control. It's a git uh, system for uh, data so you I let's say you have a folder so the first thing you do is git init and then you dvc init and then you dvc add the folder name or file name where usually you have your data set and your uh, models so your artifacts and then the next thing you need to do is um, git add. So there is there is a good documentation here. Get started. So DVC init. Oh, they commit to. In my case, I don't. I don't. Uh, yeah, they git commit. So when you DVC init or when you DVC add, it creates a file where it stores a hash of the version of the folder or the file you want to save. 
and uh, you need to commit that file so this file the, the real file is added to the git in your ignore and the, the hashed uh, file is added to the to git so you need to add them and then commit them and then push them and then the next time you you use uh, so you git pull that repo you just need to dvc pull and it will get the data set so let's look in my case i use it uh, here i think <coughs> wait remote so when you set it up here you need to oh it's yeah wait let me show you uh let me show you yeah, let's make dear dump cd dump ls and now um, let's git init okay git status okay then we can uh, conda activate ldm uh, pip install dvc ssh because I, in my case I use ssh you can look up uh, the other ones let's and there, there I have to say their documentation is not uh, the easiest one to use a troubleshoot you know what command reference yes uh, git git init I think <coughs> is there SSH here somewhere So we can DVC in it, and then we, we can create a folder uh, data, and then we can DVC add data, and then we need to git. So if you look at git status now, we can see that it created uh, a DVC ignore, a DVC config, and DV another DVC ignore, and that. Uh, dot git ignore and the folder this one were added so we need to add everything and then git push and we could dvc push but uh, we need to set up i forgot how to set up the remote let's have a look remote add here so when you dvc in it you need to add uh, a remote so it could be an aws it could be an ssh and in ah oh, here so in my case you can do a local remote too usually most of the time i do uh, so let's let just do that it will not work but uh, yeah let's do that so you give it the remote address and then this usually is an ip address uh, this is a, a username no this is the name of your um, dvc and this is the path of the data where the data is stored so this is done once on the server that you use for all of your projects and all of your projects should store their data sets there and let's put path okay and now if we go to I think this folder and then config no oh it's not and here you can see that we have this my remote and this is the URL you can edit it and um, you ne we need to add 
if you want it to work we need to add uh, so uh, DVC SSH authentication ask ask for auth i think it's called or ask for ask for password oh, it's the same pass there is So I found it somewhere. I wish I could stop the video and look it up uh, on, on my own, but ask password. Oh, you can do it here. Okay, you can add it on the. So let's let's do it. Let's do. Let's copy this. So it's not my. It's my remote. Okay, and now we can do this. And you see, it's ask password equals true. And now we can just, again, we need to save this file. We need to add this uh, commit and push, and then we can DVC push, and it will ask us for a password, and it will push. And then whenever you, you can git clone somewhere, and then uh, here, link. And then you can just get a DVC pull. And there is a tool that I didn't master yet called uh, DVC FTS, I think. FTS. So they merged uh, DVC and, um, and Git. This is also DVC is uh, mandatory. I mean, it's you can. Look, they have yeah ten thousand stars. <coughs> so to transition to the last uh, project, so there is this tool called the, the Dax Hub, the startup. They want to become the next uh, GitHub for machine learning, and they want to master the whole, so to handle the whole process. So. Um, to do experiment tracking, data versioning, uh, artifact versioning, uh, I think even the deployment, even the CDCI, you see, so everything in here, even the data labeling, they want to be able to do it here. Uh, I, I didn't uh, spend enough time to have a proper look into this, but um i have interesting articles but it's worth having a look in uh currently for experiment tracking i use aimstack and i'm very happy with it so i, I will try to show you how this uh works <coughs> quick start yeah Le I, I i will do that let's let's do that but before, oh yes, we need to pip install it. So pip install uh, aim pip. I think honestly, the tool is wonderful, but the name, ugh, it's so hard to, to look it up online. <coughs> So they have 3,000 stars, and I will show you the GitHub. 
they are very reactive and as you say they have updates and uh, they have commits that uh, uh, so what you can do is quite a few things you you can track your experiments so you can uh, give them names uh, we will we'll do this So let's let's create let's import aim and then we can create the run and here I think you can give it a name. Let's go to the documentation. Uh, get started. Pip install. Yeah, you see, and then so here run. Let's see if. Here you can give it a name. Oh, repo. What's a repo? Oh, where to store the data? Okay. Oh, so this is because also for aim you have a front and you have a back. So the back is uh, it's basically just a folder with the right uh, with everything saved in there. And what you can do is you can set up where do you want these. So you can have them on a server somewhere. They have a Docker image uh, that you can run as a server. And then um, you can ask your AIM instance or your multiple machines to log all of their data to that uh, one machine. And this way you, you have everything centralized. You can give your experiment a name. So let's experiment. Oh, nice. Uh, let's give it test. Uh, then you can have parameters so what I advise and what I do is to have a config file and load the config file and loop over the config file to put everything here so that you don't forget any parameter everything that you use should be set up from the config file and then um, so you can do multiple things you will not go uh, through everything what else can you do you can you can say let's say yeah, they, they, they basically have a, a good example. Let's, let's go here. 100 and uh, name track. I don't want I. Let's go with uh, math.random. Can I import math? It's a small m. Math.random. Does it exist? Uh, let's, oh, nice. Let's, let's uh, go sign of I. And then we will run our script. It will, so now it's creating the files. <coughs> So it looped over it and uh, now I can stop it. I can, so if I go here, I should have a folder named aim and I can aim up, run the server. So this is the front and I can just copy this. And as I told you, if you run this in SSH, in an SSH console, it will forward this uh, port directly to you. And what you can do is you can also have the front in your server uh, in the same place where your uh, server, uh, AIM server is. So let's have a look here. We can see we have one experiment named test and we can we can actually log, you can log a lot of things. Uh, you can have system logs to know your disk usage, to know your CPU usage, to know. Uh, one other thing you can add is log, um, how's it called? It's a parameter in your run. You add a system metrics and this way you know, or Git and DVC, it even takes into account DVC. So it will tell you uh, which branch wa which branch was it and which command line did you use to run it. Um, so here you have all of your uh, metrics, you have your parameters, you can log images. 
I think there is an example here. Example, yeah. Uh, here, no. Where is it? They have a live example. Oh no. So you can log images to, you can log text, you can, you can uh, compare everything. So here you can add metrics. Uh, let's say, I don't know, I want to check the loss search and it will give you the loss, but you can have multiple ones and then you can color them, group them by color uh, using, I don't know, the experiment name, for example, or maybe the run number or something like that the, the run hash or maybe the metric name you can can do quite a few things you can have it so it does the same thing as uh, weight and biases but this is smaller project and this is open source and you can host it so i would say go for this one you can compare images even though it's a bit sometimes buggy it's not completely polished but i think it's very promising and i, I wish them a lot of success and they are very uh, responsive oh you can here you can manage columns so you can move whatever you want you can add new ones i mean depending on the on on what you have you can pin something you can for example let's say it's still under heavy development but let's say we you want the duration yeah let, let's put the duration here and then I want it, you can color. Oh no, you can't do it for this one. But for, for this one, for example, you can apply color scale and this one, this way it will go from yellow to green and uh, it will map the values to the, the lowest, to the smallest and the greenest to the, to the yellowest, sorry, the lowest to the yellowest and the greenest to the highest. And I think these are all the two. So I use everything together and I document everything. So for experiment tracking, I use this. This way I don't have to store anything. Uh, for debugging, I use the image viewer, the CSV viewer, the, the debugger uh, and everything I run is through uh, SSH remote for uh, data i use dvc this way i know which experiment one thing i do usually is I, I go so when when i deploy something this way since i have the parameters i can reproduce the experiment and usually i just go and here deployed in uh, asterix server save this way i know which experiment led to a deployed version and voila i hope this was useful